Congressional correspondent Nancy Cortez is on Capitol Hill. All right, so Nancy, we heard Democrats there using some forceful language there with respect to President Trump's claim. You also asked House Speaker Paul Ryan about it. What have you been hearing on the Hill? Uh, well, what Speaker Ryan said was uh, much more forceful than what his Senate counterpart Mitch McConnell had to say in that clip you just played. He said point blank he sees no evidence to support Mr. Trump's claim, and he said uh, that this is something that he has said in the past. I pushed him on that, and I said, um, but, but are you concerned that you're dealing with a president who uh, sometimes is subscribing to his own set of facts? And uh, Speaker Ryan simply said that he's going to stay focused on policy and not get involved in all this back and forth. It's a tricky issue for Republicans because they don't want to look like they are getting crosswise with the new president. They don't want to um, uh, contradict him. They don't want to criticize him. But at the same time, they really wish, Elaine, that he would stay focused on the issues at hand because they see this, A, as a distraction, B, as untrue, and C, they really don't like having to answer for some of the claims that he's making. Hmm. Uh, meantime, Nancy, of course, three of President Trump's nominees faced lawmakers in the Senate on Tuesday, including Mick Mulvaney, chosen to be the head of the Office of Management and Budget. At one point, a Democratic senator from Oregon, Senator Jeff Merkley, pressed Mulvaney, though, on the president's perception of inaugural crowds from Friday. Let's take a listen to that. I have behind me two pictures they were taken at about the same time of day in 2009 and 2017. Which crowd is larger, the 2009 crowd or the 2017 crowd? Senator, if you allow me to give the disclaimer that I'm not really sure how this ties to OMB, I'll be happy to answer your question, which was from that picture. It does appear that the crowd on the left-hand side is bigger than the crowd on the right-hand side. Thank you. The president disagreed about this in his news report. He said, it's a lie. We caught them. We caught them in a beauty, referring to the press reporting. It says it looked like a million, a million and a half people. All right, Senator Merkley went on to say that the president's team, quote, wants to embrace a fantasy over a reality. So, Nancy, what did you make of that exchange? Well, the point that he and other Democrats are trying to make is not that President Obama had a bigger crowd uh, than President Trump, but that uh, Mr. Trump is sticking to uh, a set of facts, alternative facts, as his, uh, as his press aide um, famously put it, uh, that they say is very troubling. Because when it comes to something like crowd size, it's, it's kind of trivial. But what if it comes to policy? What if it comes to foreign policy? Uh, what if he gets dug in in some of these policy uh, debates, even with his own party, uh, and he is subscribing to conspiracy theories or, or, or alternative realities, uh, and, and members of Congress or his own staffers can't make much headway with him. Uh, and the question that Democrats are asking is, isn't there anyone on the president's own staff who can sort of talk some sense into him on some of these issues and convince him uh, that some of these assertions are uh, getting in the way of his agenda and creating a headache for uh, the entire Republican Party uh, here on Capitol Hill? On another topic, Nancy, one of the other notable hearings was held for Health and Human Services nominee Congressman Tom Price, who's been under increasing scrutiny since President Trump signed the order to dismantle parts of Obamacare. What do we know about where Congressman Price's nomination stands? Well, Republicans are still broadly supportive of his uh, nomination. So uh, it, it, he had to go through a, a second confirmation hearing, which is kind of unusual. But his agency, Health and Human Services, the agency he wants to lead, is so large that it actually comes under the jurisdiction of a couple different Senate committees. And that's why he had to testify once before the Health Committee and then uh, this time before the Budget Committee. Uh, again, Democrats had a lot of tough questions for him about this Obamacare care replacement. What would it look like? What would it mean for people with pre-existing conditions? What would it mean for people who had gotten their insurance via the exchanges? Uh, and they felt that he really couldn't answer some of their basic questions. In fact, there was kind of a funny moment um, on a serious topic when Sherrod Brown, a very progressive senator from Ohio, uh, asked Mr. Price about this supposed plan that the president says is all but complete. Uh, this plan to replace Obamacare, which came as a big surprise uh, to Republicans on Capitol Hill who don't really think that such a plan exists. And uh, Congressman Price responded jokingly, well, it is true that the president 
has said that this plan exists. <laughs> um, so, so even he was able to make a little bit of light of that. And um, you know, it, it is a challenge for uh, anyone who is representing this administration. They're going to get peppered with questions about what the replacement is going to look like. And the reality is that there's something that is still very much in the early stages, and it's being hashed out by the White House and by Republican leaders here on Capitol Hill. Boy, every word parsed right now, Nancy. All right, the, finally, the Trump administration has put a media blackout on the EPA. No press releases, no blogging, no social media. Do we have any idea, Nancy, what the impetus for this was? Well, there are probably a couple of uh, impetuses, uh, Elaine. One is that this administration is certainly going to take a very different approach to the EPA than the Obama administration did. They want to cut regulations. Uh, they're far more skeptical about the impact of man on climate change. And so the EPA is going to look very different. And uh, they are going to want their Facebook posts, their blog posts, their Twitter feed to reflect that. And so they've imposed this moratorium, particularly because we've seen uh, that some other agencies, most notably the Park Service, had tweeted out some things that uh, the incoming administration did not agree with. And so what we don't know right now is whether this ban is uh, permanent, whether it's just uh, for a couple of weeks until uh, the new administration can kind of get its feet on the ground, take a look at the EPA, figure out how it wants to change things. And I think that that uh, will be a, 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 the big question is, are these people being uh, permanently silenced who work for or the Environmental and Protection Agency, or are they just being told to hold off for now while we get our feet on the ground, while we figure out what our message is, and then we'll start back up again? All right, we know you'll continue to watch it. Nancy Cord is on Capitol Hill for us. Nancy, thank you. You're welcome.